Okay, well, do we need the mic? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, the main thing is that it's going to be streamed. Yeah. It's yeah. not going to matter if it's streaming the camera. It's right there. Okay. All right. Well, then I'm not going to use it, but if you can't hear me, let me know. Um, so if you don't know who I am, I think most people here do, but I'm Ann Dickinson. I'm the marketing director for the Free DSD Foundation. And over the last couple of years, uh, the foundation has taken a more active role in Google Summer of Code. I've been on the admin team um, this year in a much greater capacity than last year. But the purpose of this working group is just to talk about um, you know, how the project's working with Google Summer of Code. We've been in that sort of program since the beginning. And so I'd just like to get some feedback on what we can do better, what we, you know, what's working from your feedback if you've worked with Google Summer of Code before. So we're going to talk about the history, we'll talk about how things are going this year so far, um, and then it's really going to be an interactive discussion about, you know, how do you, should we grow the, the project ideas page, what are some realistic expectations, both on the admins and the mentors, and then how can we you know, increase mentorship. So taking a quick look back, um, like I said, we've been in free PC summer, Google Summer of Code since the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, branding. Um, so, and you can see we've had, you know, we had some really good years, 2007, with a large number of accepted projects and completed projects. And over the last, you know, few years, the number of submissions and pieces has gone down. Um, so, one of the things we'd like to talk about today is thoughts on how we can sort of take that back on the uptick. And one of the things is that Google Summer of Code has grown exponentially in the number of projects participating has grown, so students have a lot more options. So maybe that's from the very beginning, but it's something to look at. Uh, one of the nice things is over the course of this time span, we've had at least 33 people who've become committers from being on Google Summer of Code, and so we have a few questions. Okay, this is a good discussion. Do you think there's more? Uh, I'm, okay. I'm not sure. Okay, well anyway, um, at least 33 from the research we did, um, and could be more. So it's really kind of a good funnel into getting folks to learn about FreeBSD and to join the project. So we want to keep participating in it, which is why we're having this working group today. Uh, so this year, um, we have three admins. Um, there's one who's here, Brooks, who's um, had experience with the whole thing before. Uh, myself and then Maddie Megapari, uh, who is in France, who is um, a first time mentor and admin, and just gives her. He's been super helpful. Um, and then this year we had 17 proposals submitted, and we accepted seven of them. Uh, you can see these projects here. Uh, we haven't started work yet. That starts in a couple weeks right now. We're in what they call the creative bonding period, where the mentors talk with their students. So. As I mentioned earlier, the state of the submissions, you know, we've seen a downward trend, um, the number of submissions that we've gotten um, and accepted projects. So the question is, you know, if folks have ideas on what we might do to sort of increase that. I know from my perspective, from my marketing hat, you know, I want to do more outreach to other groups, universities, things like that to make sure students are aware, whether it be hosting with other student meetup groups or, you know, talking with other folks who are teaching, all those kinds of things. But if anyone else has ideas, um, you know, I'm open to that as well as ways to further increase the number of submissions. So, uh, we can talk about that a little bit later. All right, so, this is part of the interactive portion of the uh, working group. So, you know, questions about our project ideas, one of the things that affects of submissions or the number of ideas that we're putting out there for students to look at and see if these are the kind of projects they want to work on. Um, and so, you know, do we think that the projects that we have are the ones that are correct for, um, you know, students these days? Is it something they want to work on? Um, are there, you know, we have a list of, I put up the ideas, we have a list of, um, oh, get pictures of my kids too. Um, Folks want to see put them away and take care of. Yeah, it did. But that's okay. If you can read that ish, yeah. Um, so you can sort of, you can all go there as well. You know, not anticipate. Um, but the what the question is, you know, are 
these the right ideas? Are there better ideas? And are there other people we should be talking to? We have a small group of folks within the community that sort of gives us ideas every year. We put out a call for ideas right before Google Summer Code, and you know, where else should we get these ideas? So working to the community and the folks here to help figure out better places, you know, other people to talk to to get ideas. Let's see. So on that topic, mm -hmm. your suggestion sort of about annually does something, but especially you get the can that's sort of not quite at the right time of year, but you know, we have the largest number of developers here. And you know, we just finished you know, FreeBSD 13 you know, tab mm -hmm. on B. And uh, we could put things up and put name checks. So it seems like we could have a much shorter session, but Google Summer of Code ideas. Because here we've right. got all these people that have all these ideas. Now, they may be that those ideas are too complex a level right. for what we're trying to do here. Um, but. It seems like just brainstorming and it's better yet than people saying, oh yeah, I'm helping, willing to help right. at least work out what that idea should be, even mm -hmm. if they aren't willing to mentor it. Um, just getting that kind of a brain dump out of previous developers are likely to get ideas that, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I saw that thing go by, I ought to do that, but you know, <laughs> when they're sitting in a room and you're asking them for brainstorming, you know, in 15 minutes, you're gonna get way more than you're gonna get off the mail. And whether those are useful or not, I don't know, but I think that's a, you know, that triggered an idea in my head. Yeah, I think that's a really good place to start. Um, yeah, you can be done okay sometimes <laughs> if you're a BSD college, is that the right time? Yeah. Um, when I was there a couple of years ago, um, we did do, well, uh, Alan and I both generated good ideas, the problem is we didn't find other measures. So we got people who submitted, we, we couldn't take them all, um, kind of bit unfortunate. Right. But it's also a place to yeah, it's, it's a pretty good place. There's a lot of mentor right now. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> and well, we've missed this window. This, yeah. this ship is already sailed, yeah. and Europe is the next it's, big one. So it's also be worth trying to figure out if there is a way to have a you know have a, a like code some of code ideas and sort of general ideas list ideas that are concrete enough and yeah. small enough. I've noticed for things that I think are not quite big enough for GSOC, when I put them on the ideas list, I've got one of them that I think was asking, is this taken? And I've said no, but, you know, like five times now. <laughs> yeah. People say that and then they disappear, or they ask me one question and then they disappear. So there is a, a bit of problem with follow up there yeah. some of the time, which well, maybe I just need to put it on GSOC or something. You'll have to do it. So <laughs> we'll go back to the years where we're, we were having you know, 20 and 25. Yeah. What, what, I mean, were those ideas smaller in scope, or was it just a different time, or? We definitely we had better ideas. Um, the years when we had tons of people, we also had, well, there were just more applicants. Like, Google tracked down a number of applications um, because they really had a hand for a while. Um, we weren't as overwhelmed with some projects. Some projects were getting, you know, 10 slots out of 1,000 applicants. Which is just impossible to do anything other than throw the app, throw the down the stairs. Um, but we, um, we we had like seventy or ninety yeah. or you know we had more here right like up, up near hundred. Yeah, and I don't know if our how I don't know how that looks compared to everyone else. Just whether it is we are not being attractive, or I know there has been a shift in the There have been shifts in the mm -hmm. team. So then, well, what was that? Seventeen applicants to nine accepted, or whatever. Seven, yeah. Yeah. What? So what? What were the ones that were not accepted? What uh, were the reasons for not accepted? Well, so we had. Well, one case we probably could have taken eight um, without duplication. We got half of them. Almost half of them were uh, uh, merging ping and ping six. Uh, so there was just a whole lot of people that wanted to do the same thing. People, people mm -hmm. mopped up. That would be easy for all of them. Mm -hmm. Probably really hard. Actually. Yeah, we had multiple, you know, same project, but none of them were <laughs> great. Um, and then the rest were just not up there. What we consider a good proposal for sort of. Yeah, I, I felt like there were eight we could have accepted, and yeah. just one of them. In the end, I think I took the the best paying one because the there was one where I had concerns based on reading in the comments that they were reading Linux code in their efforts to. To you know get started, and I didn't want to end up with a GPL kernel substitute. 
Yeah, and the other thing, yeah. Well, and the way it works is that you have to request slots before and then Google decides how many you get. Yeah. And so if you're, you know, just a tiny thing of figuring out which projects you think are going to be good, but then you also have to make sure if your student may not actually end up, you know, if they get a lot of offers, then they could probably do a bunch of different projects. So it's sort of a guessing game as to how many, you know, how many slots you want to ask for, because if you don't use them, then it's just an open slot. You can't, like, give them to another project or something. And so that's frowned upon in Google's land, because then it's just an empty slot that's going to get used by some student who could have used it. That I think perhaps a little bit I mean, extra cautious. I'm, all, I, I'm also like, if we get eight projects accepted and we have <laughs> you know, six successful and we get three new committers uh, who stick around permanently as a result, I think that's a better result than having like 25 accepted uh, projects and six, uh, like six completed, six, six, six successful and three committers that stick around, right? Like, I think in, in the past we had. I think we've had, saw, uh, um, we've included proposals that have gone further down the quality list um, in the past. Like I think we have a pretty good set. More recently, we've generally had yeah better. I, I, I would say overall application quality is probably up. Yeah, you always get one or two projects where just that's the one people glom onto, so there are bad ones. But I think I think despite application going down, it's actually been. Quality. Quality's been a bit better anyway. Um, some of that too is I think they only let them apply to two projects instead of five. Yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. Google keeps changing the, the yeah. parameters as they grow. You yeah. said something about needing two mentors per project. Um, they suggest that it's not a terrible idea. We only have like one or two projects where we've actually assigned two mentors. Um, yeah, it just helps because there are some hard deliverables that if you don't deliver. You lose like your funding for the student. So there, there's always the backup that like yeah. uh, mentors have to submit. Well, mentors are supposed to submit um, reviews for students, but admins can do it. So the last day, any admin told them it's just basically yeah. get something up. Yeah. But but people people get busy and you know yeah. and also uh, as for mentors, it's not always obvious what they need to be doing, and it's very useful for them to have backup and someone to talk to. Uh, that's why I'm uh, co-mentoring a project that Tom is doing. Well, Tom is mentoring us. Uh, Tom will do most of the technical things, but he wants someone to help. What do I do now? I guess he views us more like being a mentor than the mentor. So yeah, I would describe it as a mentor of a mentor. Uh, it's, we have a GSOC channel, uh, uh, sorry, a Slack channel for GSOC mentors, and my hope is that you know our mentors will turn up there and go, what do I do with my students or, or things like that. So are you officially a mentor? I think I am. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I did add you. Uh, but it, oh, uh, fundamentally, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, most of the communication is, is outside of the outside of Google's system, and as a mentor, I think what you get is a t-shirt, and I have enough t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. But that does bring us to your question. I mean, there are some expectations on mentorship. It is a time commitment. You do have to talk to your students, you know, weekly. Um, and we also, even before we have students, you know, admins need help reviewing the proposals and, and such, and so making deadlines. Um, so that's something that I think is communicated that mentors know when they sign up, but yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> the risk of, of making it sound harder, it, it's a lot more than weekly contact with a student. Okay. Uh, expect this to take up significant time. So define significant, better define significant uh, before the breakfast up and put it somewhere. Five hours a week, ten hours a week. Okay. Um, it uh, probably depends on the students, but, uh, but I would expect most of them to want a lot of guidance and a lot of reviewing. And Depen again, depending on the student, prodding for, you know, I would actually like to see a progress report from you. Um, I would actually recommend making your student send a daily report. Oh. And, you know, not, not a three page report with these are the things I've done, but uh, standard report style, just two sentences. What have you done today and what are you going to do tomorrow? Okay. Um, yeah, no. Sharing my experience, so I mentored 
two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and the students sort of faded away halfway through the project. And I had great trouble getting the students to, what, what have you done? What are you going to do? And I think I was too patient as well. Mm -hmm. I think I should have been a lot clearer uh, to the students that, you know, look, you have to write these reports. It's, it's not optional. You have to write them or you are going to fail. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy to tell people that, you know, you're going to fail. Right. Right. That's like a guideline, though. You know, if we had guidelines for the metrics, so that they meet yeah. all these that up front. Do we have anything? I, I think we rely on Google for those things. Yeah. We, we, have, we have never been very good at that. Uh, Google does have a big document that I've never read. Yeah, I've read it. <laughs> well, I've read it. It's not that helpful, I don't think, as much as maybe something we could do is project specific for you know yeah. uh, what we would like to see from people from the projects we want to mentor. Um, and so that leads into the next thing. I mean, what can we do to increase and participation and help mentors, people who've already agreed to mentor? So it sounds like obviously better documentation is a step in the right direction as far as um, you know, helping you figure out what you need to do just from the basic things like how long is working per week, what are you know best practices for checking up your students, that kind of thing. Um, you know, we do mention mentoring the mentor. I mean, with that channel, do we think that there's enough interest in the current set of mentors, people who've mentored more than once, that they would be willing? I mean, it's you know, it's a tough thing because a lot of folks who are mentors more than once. Are mentored now, so you're asking them to be a mentor of a student, and a mentor of a mentor, yeah. and we're running out of you know time. Uh, I don't think I've seen a lot of activity on Slack on the Chief of Members uh, channel so far. So maybe it was just me. Maybe I was the only one who felt like a bit dropped into it. And then, okay, what do I do now? Uh, maybe other members feel feel better about this. I don't I think more people. Yeah, I think so. I think I've heard of at least one other mentor say I can do some more input, so yeah. it's not just me. So that's something that I think um, from a foundation and a you know standpoint we can help with. Um, sort of. So when you say ten hours a week, it's just like on the phone with the students, or yeah, um, it was mostly email. Uh, so you know, you get questions from the student. How do I do this? How do I do do that? Uh, I've done this thing. You know, look at my patch. Uh, does this look safe? Uh, and so you need to you need to be involved in the technical projects uh, as well. You know, what are you doing, and, and how should you be doing it? Uh, and I found that to take a fair bit of time. No, but you also need to be fairly reactive. Yeah, I think it's useful to well, not not in you know, you know not in a you should reply within ten minutes, but I think it's useful to not make the student wait three days for a reply. Uh, because a lot of them will just sit around and wait for the reply. Um, it is a relatively short period to do something in, especially if they still need to absorb all of the context of, you know, how do I build this system, how do I test this, uh, where does it go with, how does all of this work, and then have to do the work. Then it's a very short period to do something in. Well, and I think also helping mentors figure out how to set up the content expectation with the students. As yeah. well, because I've seen a lot of that where the student you know, expects a reply within five minutes and has a challenge if that doesn't happen. And so I think it's important that you know mentors have a set of this is how you set your expectations with your, yes. with your students. Yeah. I mean, there, there are other projects we can talk that we can sort of have, you know, have all their mentors require a video chat once a week mm -hmm. or that sort of thing. We've never been very successful. Um, and possibly. Yeah. It would probably be useful from a from a G sort admin thing to for the admin to send out that look, okay, this is what we propose. You know, daily stand up reports and a weekly IRC or video chat uh, about these things. Uh, this is where you have to you know uh, submit or, or commit your uh, in progress work, and this is what we want it to look like. And then, you know, with a, with a disclaimer at the bottom that, you know, if the mentor wants to deviate from this, fine, but this is what we recommend. Okay, that's helpful. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, and then, do you have ideas about how else might increase participation? Because I think part of the thing is just recruiting mentors. 
how do we get folks to be willing to spend that much time to invest in, you know, possibly collaborative community and helping project and, and that kind of stuff. Um, so that's the first question. And then the second question is, um, with the idea of being a mentor, but I hear, well, it's 10 hours a week, and, you know, well, what am I doing and all this, you know, will I have to, you know, do I have to be super responsive and blah, blah, blah. So the mentoring the mentor or at least, you know, having something that, some documentation that, look, this is more or less what you need to do would take some of the fear away from <laughs> signing up for the MSA. Yeah, okay. so that, that's why more than a year ago, I think I suggested the, the GSOC members uh, chat room at least if you have a place to go and you have here, you can talk to some other mentors and, and ask questions. Yeah. Uh, I think 10 hours is probably on the high end of things, and it will depend a lot on, on what sort of student you get as well. Yeah. Uh, there's probably another useful note to make is that if you get students contacting you and asking questions about their proposal very far in advance of the deadline, those are the students you want to focus on. You will get a lot of submissions at the last possible moment and you know, without having done actual science on it, I'm pretty sure they're on average the worst submissions. Because if you get someone approaching you with you know, a proposal, I would like to do this uh, very early on, uh, those are the ones to pay attention to. Okay, so um, as far as setting up to keep this, because this conversation happens a lot, at, you know, whether it be at your BSD, Dev Summits, or other Dev Summits, I know in a lot, there's one at Positive, I think there was one here last year, but once the conversation happens, it sort of stops and nothing happens, and then all of a sudden it's time for Google Summer Code and we're all scrambling and saying, here are ideas. So, I mean, are, do we think that if we were to establish an actual working group type thing that like met monthly or, you know, just to check in and work on the ideas list and see who they can talk to about being mentors. Is that something you think the community would be receptive of based on the previous experience with Google Summer of Code? So if you're not interested in being a part of something like that. I don't know if a monthly working group is, is terribly useful. Perhaps as, as Kirk suggested, uh, an extension to the have in one session of, you know, what are small small projects mm -hmm. where you would be willing to do some amount of mentoring, uh, because that might actually be wider than just GSOC. GSOC. Uh, the Linux people tend to have junior class things, or uh, that might be interesting how the, you, know, you can get started doing this. And I have any number of ideas, but there's no time to do them or, or necessarily mentor them. Uh, there's litification projects, there's any number of tools that can get up into the tool and the library that supports it, for example. Yeah, I mean, we have the, on our website, the place where there's you know, things to do if you want to get involved with 3 yes. and you know, things that don't fit Google Summer Code could very well go there. Or, yes. You know, I mean, again, that's a, pl a place where having some ideas is, that might suck some people in would be helpful. So we, I think we have a Julius page, but it would probably stand from uh, curating. Yeah. So I mean, that's, you know, I think, right now. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a wiki, so, you know, uh, so occasionally you can, somebody does something. So you could so buy an idea, I guess, to go in Yeah, you would go in and just turn on. It just might be useful to try at the Dev Summits to, you know, we'll take an hour or two and we'll get through this list and everything where we think you know, this is grossly outdated or this is a lot more complicated than the description makes it look, we can throw away and we can have a number of things. It's somewhat hard, but kind of like a good like solidify a kitchen date. You can then think that they're not there for part of the session, which is yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like not, they're not gonna have them. The world is coded. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the line driver is probably not that exciting. <laughs> Update update all the lines and all the serial lines and stuff to uh, interview the people. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a perception thing, also, that we want to make sure we have before we start sending it out to students, right? We want to make sure that we're not saying, here, look at this stuff that is going to have no relevance on your future yeah. career, right? Like, that's the other thing that is 
something that is sort of important so they, you know, yay, when we're for previous we made sure that we're working on something. I think we've done some work on curating the uh, default proposal mm -hmm. list, so we should do the same to the junior list. Uh, and I think we might need to be a, li a little more bloodthirsty when we curate things, unless we are, you know, unless we actively think that this is a good idea and this is a feasible project, we should just delete it. Plus, you delete it all the time. Sorry? You delete it all the time. Yeah. yeah. And if somebody complains, they get a mentor. <laughs> there you go. Um, so if we do this, at, I guess my question would be: if we were to do something like this at, at all to the summits and things like that, how do like how do we ensure that it gets continued on? Because again, there's still that gap between a dev summit to you know the start of GSOC, and you know how do we know who's going to be admins? I mean, Core sort of does that, but I'm just wondering if you have ideas on. I guess that's why I was thinking more default because there are times when we're not all together. And Things still should be. Yeah, uh, I think you need one or two people who actively care about GSOC and want to push it. I know that Gavin did that yeah. for a while, uh, and I think that's hugely helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Small bit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so would that be uh, a committee, a working group? I mean, uh, would that be some type of. Uh, I think just one person who really cares is, is what we need. Some. One person who cares and who will do the, the pushing, who will, you know, who will just schedule an event of the dev summits, and who will just edit the wiki page and go, "This is what we're going to do." And how do we find that person? Ah, well, if I knew that, I would find someone to help me do PF things. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what, at least from the foundation side, right? Like, I can help with the admin kind of whole thing, yeah. that kind of thing. But as far as like browbeating people and knowing which people to browbeat, that's fine. I'm not even asking those. So. Yeah, you probably need someone, uh, so, someone who's at a lot of dev summits and who will stand up in front of the room. Uh, someone like George or Alan or, or even Benedict who stand up in front of the room and make a talk about this now. Okay. <laughs> Poor Benedict. Three you about to be nominated. <laughs> well, so yeah, Benedict gets nominated for a lot of things because he doesn't know how to say no. <laughs> Sorry? It's our job to speak. Yeah, but you know, maybe without breaking him. I, I see you, so at least during the summer, it might not be crazy if you like build a monthly call or a call them before the battle kicks up. Yeah, yeah, definitely during active. Project ideas. Planning surveys to 
our younger how do we younger. find those folks who spend well they know some of them <laughs> <laughs> but who are especially students so they would be candidates you know like yeah. Chelsea mm -hmm. uh, Charlie and I mean our previous interns I mean it's a smaller pool right but yeah it's Mitchell took over as the youngest uh <laughs> Just one so well, bump younger than keep <laughs> <laughs> ruining our <laughs> And she'll always be younger than me. That's a very frustrating part. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yesterday we had a web service uh, working group, and we actually had ideas about like, uh, how to integrate uh, better, into, have, have, have better integration with a different web service we already have, or, and project ideas about the future uh, web, uh, web apps. Uh, but because we mostly have kernel hackers here, and, and so we will need people to work on uh, infrastructure for documentation or monitoring or better integration of different systems, like the boss, mm -hmm. commit, bug, or whatever. I'm, I'm just randomly thinking. Yeah. Like, ne not necessarily need to be in a kernel. That's helpful in the sense of places we should be going to get <coughs> yeah. information that might not be useful for us. So are there other things that you can think of that the foundation can do to help or yeah, I'm trying to think. So would well, that really attract people? Would that attract people? Mm -hmm. Swag <laughs> or like a cool hoodie, it can become a for like being a mentor or just from a student perspective or yeah. Swag, they're always good for, for students. Yeah, for students. I don't know about mentors. Uh, I mean, it's just a t shirt, right? I, I, I always assume that mentor, every mentor already has like 100 people. Right? Right. So, <laughs> I don't think that. Um, but for students, for students it's started a collection. Really yeah. Cool. yeah. <laughs> That's an interesting thought. Well, I know that, I mean, that works for the Google Summer Pro in general. You get a t shirt for participating. In the past, we sometimes had flyers that were made available for people to post or not. I don't know. I don't know whether they actually produced results or not, but we have we have posted flyers or you know sent out a PDF for people to right. you know, post in the past. Um, so that's a possibility. Yeah, we could do that. We have a couple of versions. We could make them maybe a little more modern. Yeah, I don't know how um, effective they are necessarily at um, students finding them, but um, I think they're um, they're a useful artifact at least in mentors uh, being being aware as well. Like just just having that PDF to kind of close around people can you know it's like it can kind of serve as a brochure I think too. So. Wait, you mean to um, get mentors? Well, just players? just like. Um, I, I think I took some to UW and stuck them around uh, at some point when uh, uh, several years ago. Um, had people post them on their campuses before. Mm -hmm. so it's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, there was one year I sent them to like the U6 campus rep program as well, you know, for the kind of students that you would have in your major. So that might be an interesting thing. Well, it's been doing cross. We have them at like uh, Grace Hopper, so when there are a lot of those attendees that are looking for internships, and we'll say, you know, well, we don't have an internship, but we participate and do a little summer program, so they'll put a flyer. Yeah, that's always hard because we don't know yet by then if we're actually. I know, right? It's one of those things like we hope we're going to be in. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's not easy on us. Are we like really worried about getting you like getting a lot more new people here? Because like I, I get the impression that we already have. Good, uh, good project ideas and good amount of submissions. So, well, I think the number of submissions, you know, as I said, if they're good, if 
it's all open for no matter how many submissions we get, but I think I, I'm a little concerned at the downward spiral that we've sort of seen it with our number of submissions over the last few years, so I think it's something to keep an eye on. Um, I mean, the thing I think also, though, um, that uh, at least in my impression, I think we have a certain class of project ideas that aren't in our ideas list and that we don't get. Like, we, um, we have a lot of uh, folks who are, um, have a kernel, uh, really technical kernel background. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, we have, they have user land ideas on the list, but I think, um, you know, really, really um, they're a lot more approachable for a lot, like as a first yeah. introduction project and having more of those, um, like, I mean, I think, I think it's great when we can get really good motivated students who have the experience and can, can pick up a kernel project, but it also takes a lot of mentor um, effort to make that successful too, right? Mm -hmm. um, whereas if we can, um, if we can get projects that we know are good introductory um, user land tools and we, or user land projects that we know have a high likelihood of success, I think that would be really good. Yeah. When we've had, when we've had good outcomes that we've been doing um, in, in some cases um, where we did fairly ambitious mid-day projects. Um, some of them are like people who are returning to the um, If we have, if, if, yeah, it would help to have more new mid-day projects and some of them would be pretty easy out there. And also I had good results two years ago. We finished them up with the mid sum of you know, generating thousand tasks. Um, that was a project. So it seems like maybe um, the next step would be then at the next Dev Summit to actually put that as a call during, you know, a session yeah. and really specify that to start to give people a place to focus their thoughts on and go from there. Well, certainly the time frame of your this speed, you know, it's, it's early enough that it's just an experiment and it doesn't work out. Right. There's nothing lost. And if it starts the seed of, of ideas, then that's good because we get a head start on it. I think, as I mentioned earlier, part of the challenge is it becomes a, oh, wait, it's coming up, and oh, we better hurry up and ask people what they think, right. and oh, wait, we better, you know, so. It um, always seems like it's kind of a panic. Yeah. So I think if we so can. So Gavin he needs to get a challenge a little bit earlier. Yeah. And that's a part of the transition, because there wasn't a lot of documentation for admins either, as far as, like, what do we do now? Like, what's the best way to do that? I mean, if Brooks were an admin, it would be kind of challenging for them. <laughs> From my side. So, what, what related Google Summer of Docs is that happening, and what's the time frame for that? So, I know that we are one of the projects that got accepted. Uh, Benedict is running that as admin, um, and I think it's pretty close to the same schedule as Google Summer of Code, but not. Mm -hmm. I, but sure. I think so that's the, it further down. Is it? Do we have projects and mentors and all those things? It, I think this year is limited to one project and one. Participants. Yeah, I think this year we, we limited it to be one project and one participant, and we do have a couple of project ideas already, and people signing up, their mentors, including me. And okay. So that's how you know about it. Because yeah, yeah. Party. If if they pick one of uh, the projects, I volunteer them. Now just. Is it you and Benedict that's going to or? Yeah. Uh, I think it's mainly us. I think there's another person. There's only two. Because they want a, what, two mentors, right? Yeah. I, yeah, I think it's mainly the admins. The admins. Yeah. So Brooks, I have a question for you. Did you step into this role because you wanted to or someone else? And then they didn't. Uh, because I've done it before and somebody needed to do it. I see. Yeah, I'm honestly yeah. totally burnt out. And, and, you, and did Gavin leave to do things because he was thinking, or just yeah. because he, he got burned out? Yeah. So, okay. So, so I think that's another thing to recognize is make sure that it's. Yeah. There has to be sort of a plan for the next person. He has to almost have like a junior yeah. I, I think, person. You know, we, we have definitely had fewer mentors in part due to, you know, in part that was due to not enough pestering. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think also, you know, mentors often don't 
fine. They get a lot out of it. They get a lot of work, and maybe they get a project they can use. Um, like Warner actually was really happy with last year's team. Had somebody who could actually commit, mm -hmm. um, which often you get something at the end which is not committable. Um, we don't we don't seem to be good at coming up with projects that have committable results uh -huh. or right. immediately committable results. Although I will in, in the defense of that say that the project I mentored was was I failed the students. Uh, part of the work went in, and it did serve as a, as a basis for, for the work I did later. So I don't think I consider it to be a, uh, a total failure. Uh, but we, we do have, we often have a hard time getting things in. And we, some of that is project scoping. Like if we just, I don't know, for whatever reason, we don't seem to do well at coming up with projects that it's like, they're going to get this thing done, and if it's going to work, and it's going to be the thing that goes in. Um, yeah, I think, I think we, um, we pick projects in some cases that are very interesting and um, we know that like a proof of concept can be completed in a GSOC um, amount of uh, effort um, and fail to account for the fact that the testing and integration and um, all of the extra work that happens to make it actually committable is an order of magnitude more. Um, and is not going to have that student around to like. We should really make sure that the scope of the project is such that the, the student is going to learn the entire process end to end um, and realize that oh yeah, there is all this extra work that I did really didn't know went into. Uh, I think in an ideal world, we'd actually scope projects so they could be completed by the second evaluation, so they could be you know the student thinks it's done by the second evaluation, so then they could put it in Fabricator and learn how wrong they. Yeah, like the, the, the measure of evaluation, yeah. If, I mean, I think a project scope should be such that the proof of concept is working and, and they think they're done. By, by the second. Yeah. Uh, and that, yeah, I mean, that would be, but I mean, one of the things I don't like about GSOC as a fundamental program, and we mostly ignore, we, we mostly work around this issue, but, um, is that it is in some ways the world's worst internship because it is, okay. This project that you've ever worked for has some ideas. Go come up with a scope and a project plan, <laughs> yeah. and, and 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 you know, and a timeline. And like this is thought work. We, we are the worst at that. <laughs> so let, let's have undergrads do it, and then not pay them if they're wrong. I mean, in previous PR, our attitude has generally been: as long as they're doing something, they get paid at the end. They just have to sure. they have to submit the part of all that meets the rule that Google, but we don't care what's in it. <laughs> Um, but like that's you know one of one of the overall issues is that like the planning and timing is hard. Well, it's good though to take that feedback because we get that feedback about project scope in yeah. some yeah. guidelines that we're putting together because that might help for people. Well, yeah, it would be nice ideally if you know we could have a goal of student has something in for review by by the yeah. you know the end of the second week by the second week. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we have, um, and we certainly had cases where um, a GSOC student did a project over a summer, um, and it basically became what was committed in a useful feature yeah. like three or four years later, right? Um, and I mean, that's great that we, we, we ended up with that benefit in FreeBSD as a result of the GSOC project, uh, but I don't think we've ever really considered, um, to, you know, taking the time to go back and consider like how motivating is that to the student um, or, the or, the or the mentor, right? When when like the student did, did this this project and, and you know as someone who's kind of in the industry and, and understands how things work um, sometimes and you're like you know it's great that you 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 know you, your work is extremely valuable and we have this proof of concept and it, it's it's phenomenal. Um, but then the student's graduated and no longer even in university by the time it shows up as a um, you know as something in FreeBSD and I think. Um, uh, it's uh, you know if you're if you're uh, applying for jobs or looking at inter other internships or something like that, being able to say I did this thing and it's in FreeBSD 12.0 is a much more valuable comment than you know I did some project for FreeBSD and they really liked it, um, but it didn't make it into the industry. Right. I don't know if it's going to. Or not. Right. So I don't know what happens. I don't know what happens, happens. Don't know what happens next, and you know I, I hope they liked it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But how many internships do you have like? Well, and I mean, so I mean, even even in the case of the um, 
uh, intern hired by the Freedom Foundation Foundation that worked directly with me, right? right. Um, no, but, but even even in that case, yeah. that work often um, does not actually make it into the tree until after the internship okay. event, right? right. Um, yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. like we, we, I mean, the, 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 the latency is, is typically less, but um, we've got like device drivers that are still in review now that the, the previous uh, terms interns um, developed or or um, like the Linux, Linux later work and stuff that's in review now. Um, so I wonder, I just wonder if we should change the expectation. So instead of it being this custom project, and then it's done at the end, they're working on a piece of something, and, um, and it will be ongoing. But now that they've gained something, and we have to find that by working on it. So or or, it, or, the, or the scope of the project just needs to be a little bit small. And it's a self-contained well, project. That, yeah. A self-contained project that they can, um, you know, they, they can, like Brooke said, by the, by the second uh, novel, um, they can have the, the proof of concept working. Um, and, he, and, and in that case, I think, even, even if it doesn't get fully committed to the tree by, by the final evaluation, like, they, they learn that kind of iterative process that needs to happen um, before it's committed. And, and you're, I mean, at least that way, by the final evaluation, you're like, you know, yes, there's, there's a few things that need to happen here, but we, we need to get, a, you know, it's a fairly straightforward path to being something committable, and, and the student's kind of happy that they had something that they can see is going to become um, there, and, and then by you know, um, uh, a few more months or so, it's, it's something that, that makes it easier to get to. Okay. Um, so, I was just thinking about how we're going to present the documentation in front of everyone, yeah. um, but I think that's really helpful. All right. Is there anything else that pretty much wraps up the questions I sort of had about? I think there's some good ideas about, what, at least from my perspective, from the admin role about how to you know, provide better intro to the folks who are asking to do things and how they might better meet the students' expectations. I think um, I think the other thing to think about, um, you know, when you were saying that like masters don't, you know, like if their student doesn't finish the project that they're hoping that would be finished. What the expectation should be for the master? So maybe you bring in a different way of you should do this to you know bring more people into the project. So well, by tr you know just like our regular mentors. I think the other thing we probably need to do a better job of um, is have mentors um, have a a post mortem on the GSOC process, and so we can you know collect that feedback from every mentor to say mm -hmm. yes, but you know. Um, I, I didn't realize going into it, but the scope of this project was much bigger than it should have been. Um, and if we can kind of collect that each time and we say, okay, well, now we can eventually gather a project that is um, an appropriate scope. Um, yeah. yeah, it's, it's you know, try, trying to do a better job of scoping. Uh, certainly, if we have projects that fail, we should make sure we understand whether it is, you know, we just got unlucky with a student or whether it's, you know, Oops, that project was was too hard. You know, we we are not being jerks and failing people when they can't complete a project because it's just too hard. But you know, that's still that sort of a failure in the end, especially because they can't repeat anymore. Mm -hmm. So they can't come back and finish it unless they do it on their own time. Um, that's I think something to keep an eye on. And in particular, any project that's not like what you know, they could have done, could have done. Right. We should be making Clear that you know we should be removing it from the list, or we should be saving it and polishing it up a bit, so that we at least you know we give it to another student and say start from here. Right, right. Um, yeah. Okay. okay. Is there anything else? Yes. So is, that, is this how is that continuity from like years by year now? So like at your VC con, um, Sean ran a session. It was basically the Dev Summit where. One session where we all participated in was input for the project for GSOC. And so one idea was um, create an FAQ. Uh, another was a mentor to mentor, a mentor for mentors. But like the FAQ, like we, so no, there was no little follow up. We look, you know, so we came up with some good ideas. Uh, when we look for the documentation or the notes from that meeting, that was in run in the Dev Summit. Um, and so just how do we? You know, continue with that because they're really good ideas. And so maybe when we have like maybe there were four ideas, and so maybe we could delegate those four and for the people or you know, they or what you know whatever helps whatever work. So 
put on because because there's a lot of there was a lot of good feedback here on like maybe things that didn't go well that we learned from and so what if we could document those things for the next the next session or even this current one right like you're talking about the calls and what we can do mm -hmm. it's just how do we you know how do we do that who do we take that on and you know that's something the admin team will do now to get it going right um, and I know the admin team doesn't Well, first, we'll let's follow go. Up on it all. Yeah, we'll follow. We'll already follow up. Follow up, I think, is the main question. Follow up and then keep track of sort of this. So there's like a list that we've put together of things that we can improve, right? And then <coughs> the assignments. Who follows up on the monthly lab stuff? Uh, George has occasionally. He has what? George has occasionally. Yeah. Up in the uh, and John, so John, like John kind of did. Discipline where he put some stuff up and keep it in um, that, that did make it in because he worked with us last year with us <coughs> to, to do that. We're not necessarily good at keep doing that consistently yet, but that's the plan. Yeah. Well, there's two different things. One's like project list, right? Yeah. And keeping up with that. And well, one is other... collecting it in the first place, the second one is following up on it. And so, whose idea it was that somebody to get something? About it. Right, but that's but that's that list that Nan showed of, of like projects, right? So managing that and just um, uh, basically being project manager for, for that, but also including like if we just you know FAQ is is a good idea to implement. Who would do that? And and, that, and so that would be like a TV put a TV list behind the box, right? And the you know way else would be on it. Call, you know, setting a call, like a plan for communicating with the administrator. Yeah, well, just a list of things that need to be updated, right? And things we've done, like holding the calls, the documentation about you know, best practices for a mentor, all of these things. Not even the FAQ, but just the best practices document, right? All of these things should be created. And the question is, you know, is that something that like the admin this time around has to take a go at? Which probably means, yeah. Um, or, yeah, right. So should we do that, or should we just get through it this time? But but maybe during this process, you know things. Well, that's what I think. That's what I've been doing, right? I've been taking yeah. notes about, it, especially like the application process, because you know we had we didn't really save the application. It's the same application almost every year. We didn't really save it, and so we had the one from like the last time Brooks did it. And so so now I have like saving those things so yeah. that we can you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. So I think we're starting to do that this year, and I think Brooks and I can sort of do that a little bit as we communicate with the mentors for this session and then after this session do a little post mortem and, and put together some documentation and then that can be fed into um, you know the euro stuff however i do think we need somebody besides me in our position to be to help make sure this stuff is actually happening between you know so that's something that maybe we can put on for the community i agree i, I do think it needs to be someone else or or we bring in someone so, um, so we can do it that way. But I think that there needs to be someone whose job it is to make sure this doesn't fall apart. And maybe it's someone you know who works with Core, who because Core I think seems like they picked up the ball after Gavin decided he wasn't going to do it. Because um, that was like Core who contacted me, and I was like, "How old are you? Oh, well, you are." <laughs> so yeah. you contacted yourself. But um, <laughs> so yeah. maybe Maggie. Uh, like maybe putting a list together yeah. of things that could be done, because I mean he, because he's new, yeah. and so and he's interested, and he's super proactive. Like you know, I think that would be really good if he has time. You know, I think he's very handy and mobile, right? Yeah, yeah. So we, we, we definitely was talking about a bunch of stuff to K too, like a bunch of the student pages. When I was going to you know add the wiki page for people to link from, like a bunch of the student pages had had things from twenty sixteen, twenty fourteen. Um, rather than last year, right. <laughs> even though we used the last year. Yeah. yeah. So we'll just clean up. Up. There's just cleanup that needs to be done to the documents from that we are, even the ones we are currently using, they have links from last year. Oh, so I see. Okay. So we, have, we have some backup. Yeah. So there's definitely a list of things that need to be compiled, and that's something that we can work on in this session, you know, or in this group of group of work group or, you know, doing things, and then hopefully have a better game plan before you know. Okay. And so Matthew is, um, so he said he'd help us in the volunteer. Okay. And that might be a good project. Mm -hmm.
going to see the two o'clock anyway. Right. And so then he just yeah, because he's also in bed twenty four just had it, so um, yeah. That's an option. Okay. Does anybody have anything else? Anything to add to that? Okay. All right. Well, I really appreciate those who came and providing feedback. If we have a few minutes, do we want to actually look at the idea? So that's going to be. I just wanted to say I'm sorry I'm late. Okay. Maybe you should. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Uh, so all, everything you've talked about today is really. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. step back from that, is that title going to draw in a student to say that's something I want to work on? That's a good point. Like, it seems like, I don't know, it doesn't seem that exciting. Like, why would I want to do this? I mean, like, the proposal we got was in format match. Yeah, that is actually a good idea, but they need to do it from the RFC, not from reading the kernel. Mm -hmm. So that, that would be one we would want to, I think, probably drop or revise. Um, Can somebody write them down too? Basically, because I'm so Yeah, when the when the kind of prerequisites or dependencies that are needed to be able to build the development environment is a new to test adoption error or something, and um, 
are quite complex and difficult. And you can uh, use different knowledge as well. Okay. This one's happening. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think the um, uh, the title of this will probably I mean it's good that we got a, a, a good proposal out of it. The title. What are we doing with those kind of characters? It's just like, it's the same, it's the same, same issue I think we have with foundation project flows, right? Like, we, it needs to be, the title of the project needs to be something that's like interesting or what, 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 what are we doing about it? Colonel Fleming, did we, uh, I'm tempted to say we should just remove it because we built this goal on them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I will actually do that one. Yeah. Okay. Let's go and take a look at the project we actually have on. Better? Uh, yeah. I, I remember seeing that one. Yeah, that's where I see. This one always gets some interest, but like we never have an effort in doing it. Mm -hmm. I think it's just yeah, it, it's it's full of those things. It's a bad project for Jigsaw because it either is going to be, you know, if, if you get lucky, it's uh, uh, everything just works and maybe you're done it in a week and and you're fine. Um, if you get unlucky, you spend uh, four weeks in a row trying to figure something out that's not working and just can't make any progress. Yeah, so I'm going to group that out. Okay. It also yeah, so that's where it has the same undefined scope, and you can just get a folder of the thing you're trying to get to work is broken, and so, you know, that doesn't play that yet. Yeah. Okay. All right, so this one, we just don't have a measure for it this year, but you might, right? No. Um, an implementation for the Linux kernel can be found here. It's probably not a. Uh... Um, <laughs> this one might be complicated enough that it's well. It's also um, that's their code. So oh, okay. So they can license it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna delete this right for it's kind of enough for yeah. for 2019, and they can review it later. Yeah. 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 Okay. Then the next one. This is like the um, pre stages of CMX on Linux this yeah. year. It's an advanced project that you can possibly go play out. Because it's the sort of thing that, for example, the people in the um, socialists might have enough experience to do. Yeah, I don't really know if it's. Well, it would depend on a lot of the obvious about it. Maybe we should add a cat. I know we have like advanced sort of for like the skill sheet, but maybe we need to actually add markers on the level of the project for this one. Yeah. Might be helpful for this week. I mean, I don't know. Especially the emotion you might see at the top or intermediate emotion, isn't it? Yeah. So 
me get one that's been because if you ask me how many of you know if someone who lives in the US. I think so. Is it, it, it no, knowing nothing about it, it feels like it would be a good project. So you think it would be a good two step project? Or I, 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 don't, I don't know what the complexity is of coming up with that stuff. Yeah. Well, is, is, it, is, is it a little unique? You know, is, is it the equivalent of a little unique protocol or is it OSAP? Um, <laughs> But there are, no, there is, there is a stack in OpenBLT. So in worst case, it's a you know, port of the OpenBLT stack. Um, you know, for a first import, it's probably fine, but it's been kernel locked slow. Yeah. Having a slow stack is better than having no stack. Yeah. Although, um, isn't that very, very similar to the map portal that might be out of the group of the old that you have staking up there? So do we think that's like actually like obsolete? Yeah, yeah, I think it's obsolete. I think it's just to move it. Because I'm, I'm hopeful for the map portal that might be out of this project because it's going to be very enthusiastic about it. Sense of the Joomla project as a you know yeah. go look in our stack for uh, for v6 things that don't quite work and send the patch for that yeah because other than the okay where do I find the ones that, the bits in the stack where where I should do the work it's a sort of thing where you know in an afternoon you can produce a first commitable patch yeah. Um, 
Diesel stock trades for over a week ago, right? So Diesel stock trading is only going. And I would wait for the results for that one before I resurrect the Diesel stock trades for us. the fact that um, we've got more submissions for Google packing than for anything else. And I don't think a lot of them were high quality to be yes. It was an indication that it just was a great project. Well, a lot of them are just going to be The ideal is when, when the student proposes a project, because then it's something that they're passionate about and something they've thought about that, well, I remember, vaguely remember being a student, so, well, yeah. Having, having ideas is good, mm -hmm. even if it's better when the student comes along and says, well, this would be a great idea. Right. Yeah. Yeah, um, and I think it's probably not a good one. Now, um, I mean, I, I think it is. It's probably a good junior jobs class, but um, the this is another one of these class, uh, cases where like find some unspecified bug to fix it. Yeah, um, I mean, a, a more so a more viable version of it might be um, use this buffer or add, add plug in support for that. Mm -hmm. Like that, that might be a better scope thing, and then maybe you find a bug in that and fix it. But mm -hmm. uh, the real goal would be to the bug is we should be good enough. Mm -hmm. So he wants to have one image and some tooling to be able to after you download that image plug in the appropriate view mm -hmm. for your oh, okay. project. Yeah. So instead of like you go home and whatever you just download arm and set it and then just run, make this a beautiful environment where you can so you preserve some space somehow and then yeah. shop the right thing into it. Yeah. Right, but isn't that too small of a project? I mean, it would be pretty cool as a project to have someone create a, you go to this website, you pick a, from a drop down and you you know, and, and which packages would you like to install and then they just pop it over. That would be a really cool. Yeah, with the web interface, it's probably a better project. Um, yeah, the one risk, I think, sorry, yeah, I think, again, I think I'll make a note that this one seems small. I would worry that um, I would worry that as a web thing, you need a different skill set than the other things. So, uh, I think you know, oh, yeah. like that it might attract a different set of viewers. It's actually very viewers that could be really good. Yeah, but like, I, but like it's quite different than. But I would very much like to get um, students who can do web stuff. Yeah, uh, do these things on the I think the trick there is whether to reach out to the right right set of, to find the right set of students that they think will actually work. Yeah.
put him in the chamber. He's in chamber, but he's not. He's not in chamber. Okay. He's not that I can tell. He's very good. Yep. Yeah, I was just in the middle of the presentation saying that it would be useful to have some library to configure port forwarding. Uh, either in PS or IPSW um, as, a, as an enabler for things like, well, Docker. Uh, one of the things Docker can do is you, you download, download a VM or, or a container or whatever the hell they call it, and you start it and it automatically sets up the port port and waits for that to work. And for, to do that, you need a way to programmatically interact with the firewall. And you can just wrap and execute uh, the command line tools, but having a library is much nicer. Yeah. And it's, well, it's, that's one use case for it. There's any number of use cases for having a library to interact with your firewall. Yeah. Okay, so I think we need to explain the use cases better. It's also a very collectively scoped sort of thing. I think it, it, it's a good project in the sense that the first step is already useful, and then you take another step and it's useful, and you take another step and it's useful. Yeah. Uh, probably not to be underestimated because the Lua FG thing is seriously non trivial to do, to do well. It needs to, someone needs to have a lot of time to sink into it.
be an okay publishing principle, but I'm not sure it isn't some of the things. Like Rome should be an impartial refrigerator. Yeah. Or should be like a huge effort. Yeah. Well, like that's just basically. <laughs> okay. And we can, if anybody has one, we can just jump out. I feel like maybe five o'clock, ten to five on first and last day is definitely not the way to ask people for ideas. <laughs> <laughs> In some ways, having fourth projects a year, lots of fourth projects a year would be good. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. But like, at the right scope, four big projects could make sense. So I don't know. Not good. I think this is a place to start for the next number of visions. Yeah. And, and there, yeah, there are now comments to the code. Well, we are nearly out of time, so does anybody have anything else? I think this was super productive, at least from my standpoint, for sure. So I really do appreciate folks coming in and providing feedback and, and helping us figure out next steps to make the process better, because I think a group of code can be kind of a lot, but it's, it's a big thing for the project, and it's important for us to be a part of it and do the best we can to get the folks in and then get folks talking about it, because if we have happy students, then they can tell their friends and Hopefully, so that's also a part of it. Also, getting some documentation down on it. Yeah. You might even have folks gather and read through that and take a suggestion on the documentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I still have documentation <laughs> during this process. And sometimes I get over the like four away from it, but it's probably going to, you know, yeah, it's some time to try to help make sure we have the measurement. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you all.